Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm doing a hands-on review of an N-Scale GMC Wrecker Kit from Showcase Miniatures. This hands-on review has a different format than some of my other reviews. Since this is a kit and the results depend on the skill of the modeler, I'm not going to give it a score. I'll just give you my impressions as I build it. This is kit number 80 from Showcase Miniatures. It's a 1950s era GMC Wrecker. It's available for $14.95 direct from Showcase Miniatures. In case any non-model railroaders are watching, N-Scale is 1 1 60th scale. This is a nice kit that will fit into the 1950s era many model railroaders prefer, though it could also be used for later time periods or as a standalone model. Showcase Miniatures also offers other versions of this truck with different back ends, including a flatbed, box van, tanker, garbage truck, and bottle truck. To make sure I don't break any delicate parts, I open kits like this by using some pliers to pry the staple on the back. Then I pull the cardboard wrapper apart. The kit includes a bag with the truck parts, a bag with decals, and an instruction sheet. The parts bag includes the white metal chassis, the rear of the truck, a resin mandrel with windshield material, parts for the wrecker boom, and wheels. The resin cab in my kit was not correct for this vehicle. I wrote to Showcase Miniatures and they sent me a replacement cab free of charge. The decal bag includes two sets of water slide decals, one with black lettering and one with light lettering. You can use either one depending on the color you decide to paint the truck. I don't know if this kit follows a specific prototype, at least as far as the decals go, but I was able to find several photos online of tow trucks that look very much like the model. This would be a good kit for any 1950s era layout or as an older tow truck in a later time period. The white metal parts in my kit are mostly free of flash. I'll use some small files and sandpaper to clean up the few spots that need it. Since the winch and light bar assembly is a little too wide to fit inside the truck bed, I'll file the sides a little. I'm being careful not to file the little wheels, just the material underneath. Once it's done, it should fit in the back of the truck easily. A new sharp blade and a hobby knife is good for cleaning the flash inside the cab windows. My kit has just a tiny bit of flash inside the wheel wells. A small piece of 400 grit sandpaper will take care of it. Before continuing, I like to test fit the major parts. This looks good so far. Now that all the white metal parts are free of flash, I'll give them a soak in some isopropyl alcohol to clean off any oils or dirt that might interfere with painting. After a few minutes, I'll set the parts on a paper towel to dry. The resin cab needs to be washed. I'll use some dish soap and rinse it in some warm water. Once it's clean, I'll set it on a paper towel to dry overnight. Now that the parts are dry, they're ready for painting. I'll use some tape and some scrap wood to make a holder for the cab in the back of the truck. I'll do the same thing for the wheels and winch bar. For the chassis and booms, I'll use sprung tweezers. Normally I don't like to use rattle can paint, but I've grown to like Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. The quality of the finish is similar to an airbrush. A primer coat is always a good idea and essential for certain colors like yellow, orange, or red. I'll give all the parts several light coats of primer. The finish will be more even if you build up the paint slowly in thin layers rather than trying to cover everything in one coat. Once the primer is dry, I can apply color. I'm using Tester's Model Master Acrylic Caboose Red thinned with a little Windex for airbrushing. As with the primer, it's good to build up the paint in light coats. Since this model has decals, after the paint is dried, I'm spraying some microscale microgloss on the body. I thin this with Windex as well. Decals adhere better to a glossy surface. After looking at the painted body for a while, I decided it reminded me too much of a fire truck. I want to add some trim. I was trying to figure out how to mask the fenders when I ran across this old hole punch. It looks to be about the right size. I'll punch a couple holes in a piece of blue tape. I'll use a sharp blade in my hobby knife to cut through one of the holes. The fender isn't a perfect circle, so I had to stretch the tape around it a bit, but it works pretty well. After filling in the rest, I should now be able to spray the fenders and running boards a contrasting color. I'm using some Tester's Model Master Flat Black Acrylic in my airbrush. I decided that the boom should be black as well. I like to remove the masking tape as soon as possible after painting. It looks like it worked pretty well. 
Now I'll paint some black around the edges of the grill with a 20-0 brush. Since this truck has separate wheels, I had an idea to try using some double-sided tape to put the wheels on the end of the pencil. Then I could slowly turn them while I paint them. I'll paint the grill and highlight some small details with silver. The interior seats get some testers model master leather. Since I painted the truck red, I think the decals with the white and yellow lettering will show up better than the black. After cutting the decals to size, I'll put them on a piece of plate glass. A drop of water will help to release them from the backing sheet. I'll work on one side at a time. While I'm waiting for the decal, I'll brush some microset onto the door. Microset should always go on first, under the decal. I'll adjust the position of the decal until I'm happy with it. If it gets sticky, I'll apply some more microset. When the decal is dry on the model, then I'll apply some microsol on top of the decal to soften it. This will make it conform to the paint and look like it's painted on. Sometimes it takes more than one application of Microsol. Don't try to move the decal after applying the Microsol. Holding the model up to the light is a good way to check the decal for bubbles or silvering. If there were any bubbles, they could be poked with the tip of a hobby knife before applying more Microsol. This is looking pretty good now. Now that the decals are done, I can assemble the model. I'll start by using some CA to attach the wheels to the chassis. Before going any further, I'll use some black paint on a brush to touch up areas on the tires and chassis that didn't get painted or that weren't covered well. I'll use some CA to attach the cab to the chassis. Okay, I ran into a little snag trying to fit the back end. The wheelbase is just a little too short for the cab and the back of the truck to fit properly. I didn't notice this when test fitting the parts, probably because the wheels weren't on yet. I think the simplest solution is to cut the chassis in half. I'll make the cut at the front edge of the rear leaf spring detail. Now the truck chassis is in two pieces. I'll glue the rear half into the back of the truck. To get a better gluing surface, I'm filing the ridges and paint off the top of the middle portion of the chassis. Now I can glue the two halves together. There's a little gap in the chassis, but this is only visible if the truck is upside down. Now the basic truck is together. Next I'll glue in the winch bar. There are two sets of dimples in the truck bed. The winch bar fits into the forward set. It's hard to see, but the angled supports at the bottom of the winch bar should face forward. Attaching the booms is a little tricky. They fit into the rear dimples in the truck bed. Even with CA, I had to hold mine in place for a while until the glue set. In addition to gluing the booms to the truck bed, they are also glued to each other at the top. For the next step, I'm using some black colored Easy Line from Berkshire Junction. This material is elastic, so if it gets bumped, it will snap back into place. I've cut a couple of short lengths of the Easy Line. The instructions say to glue it to the winch wheels first with some fast CA. Once it's dry, I can use a paint bottle as a weight to hold it taut over the top of the boom. I'll put a drop of glue there. After doing one strand for each boom, I'll pull the ends together over what the instructions call the tie points. While holding the lines taut, I'll apply a drop of glue. When that's dry, I can snip the excess with my sprue cutters. The overall effect is good. I think adding the lines is worth it. Now that the truck is mostly complete, I'm giving it a coat of Tamiya Clear Flat to seal the decals. Next, I'll use a sharp number 11 blade and my hobby knife to cut the windshield out of the material vacuum formed over the cab mandrel. Where to cut involves a bit of guesswork as there aren't any grooves or lines that I can see. On the bottom, I can use the angle where the windshield meets the hood. The cutout piece of windshield is very small and hard to see. I'll use some canopy glue to attach it to the truck. I had to file the windshield a little to make it fit well. The glue will dry clear so the white areas will go away. The truck is now essentially complete. I'm using a little black weathering powder on a micro brush to darken the grill. I'll use a little black on the tires as well. Without re-dipping the micro brush, I'll rub it over the tow truck bed. This gives a very subtle weathering effect. And that's all I'm going to do to this one. I picture this as a truck that's part of a business that wants to maintain a good image, so it gets washed often. The clear flat didn't kill all of the shine, which is perfect. It has just the right look for a hard-working, well-maintained truck. I think this truck turned out really nice. It looks good with my other Showcase Miniatures trucks. Aside from the problem with the chassis being slightly too short, building this model was straightforward. I wouldn't necessarily call it a beginner kit, but if you've built and painted a model or two, then it should be no problem. I really like this kit. In spite of the short chassis, I think it deserves a green signal. I think this is a neat little model. If you're looking for a 1950s era tow truck for your N-scale layout, then I think you might like it. <laughs>